go. This week on Kentucky Afield. Oh yeah, I see it. A couple of Eastern Kentucky boys have joined us in the bluegrass. Good job, bub. And they brought along their squirrel dog, Bell. Next, we're headed south near Barren River Lake and we're looking for sandhill cranes. Then, deer season might have come to an end, but for the serious hunter, it's never over. What a nice day to be out here walking around, huh? It's time to start looking for sheds. Good job, good job. It's all next on Kentucky nice. Afield. Nice job. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Say Leo! Yeah, we're here to get the keeper! Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Many hunters here in Kentucky start off hunting rabbits and squirrels. And when you get to experience your first harvest with your sibling, well, that's an experience that you'll never forget. Stand still. No, come here. Just hold on to her lead there for a second. Well, I'm out here today with Brad Powers. Brad, this is kind of a reunion show. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Been four years, I think. One of the first shows we did, and the very first show I did with a squirrel dog, yep. was when you brought Caden out yep. on this same piece of property yep. four that's years the, ago. Yep, that's it. I'll never forget, because uh, Caden, at that point in time, I don't think you'd killed a squirrel, had you? No. And uh, we tried to get you a squirrel that day, and since then, I hear in stories, you've shot a bunch of squirrels, haven't you? Sure have. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited to get out here today, and you brought a different dog. Yeah, this is Belle. Uh, we really like her. I got her for the boys, uh, you know, so we would have something to do through the winter time, and, and we've, had a, we've had a ball with this little dog. We really have. You brought your other son with you today, Carson, yeah. right? Yeah, this is Carson. He, he was, uh, we had to leave him at home last time. He was he was a little too young. I think he was he was either five or six when we came the last time, and uh, he was none too happy about that. Great. When, when did you kill your first squirrel? This year. This year. So hey, how many squirrels have you shot this year? Twelve. Twelve. That's pretty good. You've had a good year already. First year, you know, already got twelve squirrels. That's uh, that's really good. We got about a mile this way, so I'd say we cut her loose and uh, see what happens. Sounds great. All right. Let's go. Let's go. I tell you what, today's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a rough time keeping up with these young boys and this dog because uh, I haven't even got my gun fully loaded and we've already got a tree here with a squirrel in it. So let's get up here and see if we can't let one of these boys shoot it at. Oh yeah, I see it. I got a feeling that uh, there's no way that squirrel's sitting in that tree without it being in that nest. You boys get ready. Okay. Oh, there you go. Here you go, Belle. Here you go, girl. Belle, I got it, girl. Here you go, girl. Here you go, girl. I got it. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Lord have mercy. That that thing went six feet out of the tree. <laughs> yep. Good job. Good job. Here, buddy. Good job. So these dogs initially, the, the squirrels come out for the, you know, the morning feed and they start feeding around and they leave a scent trail. And these dogs will go and they're smelling around this tree trying to pick up a scent trail, right? And then they'll push it up a tree and then that's when... Yeah, a lot of times the feist breed especially will work off of their eyes mainly, eyes and ears. And then as they get older, most of the time when they're around three years old, they'll start using their nose some. Okay. But feist mainly start with eyes and ears mainly. Okay. So right now with those, she, she's giving an alert bark every now and then. We think yeah. that's probably the fact but that she's, she's smelling starting use, one. She's smelling one, winding it most likely, just smelling that it's up there, you know. Get him, girl. <laughs> no. 
there's a great big nest in this tree. I'm afraid it's in it, but we're gonna look for it anyhow. I'll go around the back of the tree and see if I can turn it. Where's it at, girl? There it is, I see it, get it. Oh my That's gosh. a fox squirrel. That's a fox squirrel. I got, I got it. Let's go. Good job, buddy. Let's go. Right to the dog. He's been waiting years for that. Oh, really? Yeah, that's kind of the, the myth and the legend for those boys. They've never got to even, I don't think we've even treated a fox squirrel. Oh, that's a big one. Caden, we came out here with you for an entire day trying to get your first squirrel. We didn't get it on camera, but we got your first fox squirrel on yes, camera. Yes, we did. <laughs> Good job, bub. That's a big oh. one. Nice job. Thanks. <laughs> job, bub. There you go. You gotta have that one mounted, Caden. I love watching the dog. When she gets real excited and hops up on her back legs and you just know that you're walking to a squirrel. That's probably my favorite part. I'm not positive, oh, okay. but Look. I thought I seen it. Oh, I, I see it, I see it. Fox squirrel. Everybody ready? Yep. Go, buddy. Take good aim, Carson, <laughs> do it again. It's not good. Good girl, good girl. Oh, yeah. Good girl, good girl. As soon as I'd pull the trigger, he'd leave midair and be on the next limb, yeah. Carson, that first shot, he was almost straight up and down for him, wasn't he? Yeah, that's, it was. a hard, that's a hard shot, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the next one. How He's about that? Pretty fox squirrel. Make sure you reload and get ready. I did. <laughs> He's 187 yards. She's right on the side of that hill, isn't that, she? Yeah. I hope this is fox squirrel. Carson, can, do you see it good? Yeah, I see it. Get your gun up. Oh. Hold on. It's hanging. Hold on. Hold on, Carson. Hold on, Carson. There it comes. Who killed it? You got it, buddy. <sighs> yes, finally. Good job, Car. Oh, the dog's gonna bring it to you, look. Bill, can I see my big squirrel? Can I see it? Yeah, you hold it for me for a second. Hey, how about that? I'm so excited for you. You ended up getting, not only get to get, kill a, a, a squirrel on TV. Yeah. You got to kill yourself at your very, very, very first fox squirrel. Mm-hmm. Is that your biggest squirrel ever? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I tell you what, people ask me all the time, hey, I've got a kid that's interested in hunting. How should I get them started? And unfortunately, everyone wants to start with deer and turkey. You're, yep. But this, <laughs> especially with a dog, you know, look, we got Hunter's Orange on. Yep. Um, can walk around. We Both these boys are going to shoot today. Right, yeah. Uh, it's not like you go out and you set for hours and you might right. see something. It's very hard on kids just to sit still and you wait on something to happen. Here, you're constantly moving, you know, you get to move. So they learn about hunting, even, you know, hunting with a dog. This is an excellent way to introduce a kid because it's action from the time you cut her loose, you're, you're moving, it's an action. I'm ready to get back to the truck and finish my sausage and hotcakes, cause I'm hungry. During the wintertime here in Kentucky, if you hear some birds that are flying super high and they're not geese, those are probably sandhill cranes, and they are another hunting opportunity. It never fails when you put your decoys out in the morning before it's light and you think you've done a really good job. Daybreak comes and they're too tight. I'll set my perimeter first. That way I know that I'm 60 yards from the blind, 70 yards from the blind. That gives me my outer limit. Then I fill in. It makes it appear bigger from the air, makes it appear that there's more. You get them munched in tight. You know, these birds up in the air, it looks like a really small group, may not be attractive to them. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be out here and I'll end up pulling every one of them up and oh, really? covering up with grass and then hunting. You know, huh. if, if there's too much movement in them. Yeah. And you, know, you can't have too much movement, that'll flare them. We usually have a light breeze. They're moving just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they'll move a little bit and you don't ever want them turning and facing the same direction because that's how they act when they see something that's threatening. Yeah. You know, if they see a coyote walking across the field, they're all gonna turn 
and face that direction. Yeah. Well, from the air, that tells other birds, eh, something's wrong. And they're completely non-alarm, just feeding, doing their thing. Yeah, and you always want more feeders than you do sentries, just like goose decoys. Yeah. All right, let's go move truck. All right, that sounds good. Well, that's our first group, and I hear another one coming. So it looks like we're set up just in time, huh? Yeah, they roost down on Barren River Lake. And about this time every morning, they'll pick up. And they usually come off in groups of 10 or 20 to areas that they know they're going to feed, you know, most likely areas they fed the day before. Now, when they go back to the roost from the field in the evening, they'll pick up in groups of 40 and 50. So here in Kentucky, when do we typically start seeing them, and how long will they be here? You'll typically start seeing them come through depending on the weather, the end of October all the way through end of February. I witness sandhill cranes from a distance a lot. Yeah. From a deer stand, I mean, that's the time of oh, year yeah. you really start seeing them and from a boat. Yeah. But to be this close to them, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, and it could happen in a minute or two or we could be here for a couple hours. It just depends on how they fly. Well, it's beautiful out here and we're dressed for the cold. So whatever it takes, I'm fine with <laughs> We're good. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, no doubt. We've already seen our first group of birds. It could happen any time now. Right. The birds that we're going to be paying attention to are going to be coming from in front of us. Okay. Those are the ones that are going to give us some play right over the blind, and that's what we're after. There's several groups out right now making their way. There have been a few coming over on this right-hand side. It'd be nice if we could get some smaller groups to come through. Right. So once they come in, we got to make sure that they're in range and moving low, right? If they drop down to treetop level out there, they're going to be good. You see these on my side? Yeah. They're low enough if they come over. They're flaring a little bit on us. They're blind to the decoys, but they're coming in close. But right at the very end, they're starting to peel out a little bit to the right and left. There's a few right there. Here we go. There's about 15 in there. There's that group in front of us. They're coming over the trees like a want. They're a little bit lower than the last couple, so this may give us a chance here. I'm hearing birds all around us. Here, we got a single right here. Kill it. Here we go. Nice shot. Bird down. Yeah. Good job. First crane ever. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it was awesome. All right, so we need to sit down. Get ready. Yeah, get back down because they're liable to come in from anywhere again. I didn't even see that bird. That was great. <sighs> that is really <laughs> awesome. It's so exciting when those things come through like that. So many birds and all of a sudden they can come from anywhere. They can. They can I mean, you got thousands of birds coming from this way, but so many have made their way behind us and, and they you, kind of just circle and fly know. around. You don't know. You're expecting them to come from the front, but luckily you saw that one in the back. I hear some behind us right now. We got plenty more chances it looks like. Yeah. Here they come, so I'm loaded up and ready to go again. Yeah. You gotta watch out for now is you're like one more bird. Yeah. So you gotta be really careful. Shooting a single is great, but if these birds come in in 10 or 15s like they have been, you know, be careful on that next shot. I'm gonna make sure that they're not going that fast and I either take that first bird or that the very last the one. one. But there's more coming over the trees right now. They're coming in like I want them, but right at the end, they are starting to flare. I want to pull a few of these decoys and see if that doesn't help. All right. These birds here, they look good right now. This may be it right here. They're going to be a little higher than that last one, so you may have to lead this bird All right. just a little bit. All right. Get ready. They're going to do it. There we go. I've tagged out. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Your second sandhill crane. Hey, this could not have worked out any better. We got to see so many <laughs> birds. We had two birds fly right over us here. That worked out great. It did, and they're still flying all over. I mean, there, there's birds coming from every direction. Man, I'll tell you what, this was really exciting. I can't tell how much I appreciate you bringing me out here to do this. This was an absolute blast. Oh, I love it. I love sitting here watching as much as I do shooting them myself. And you have put us in a spot where those birds, you knew right where they were going to be and right where they were going to feed. And we just got right in the travel corridor and man, we have seen some birds. We gotta get out there now and tag your bird. Gotta go out there and take a look <laughs> at what we got.
So here we go. What a beautiful bird. And this one has what I would call little red on top. Right. An adult bird will have no feathers on its head and it'll be this red skin all the way to the back of its head. I'm gonna mark little or no red. Correct. It's gonna ask if it has a leg band. There's no existing bands on this bird, okay. so that's gonna be no. No. All right, the next process is when you apply, you get a band and this gets attached to the leg of the bird. To the leg. All right. But you'll need that number there, the All 2039. Right. 2039. Of course, I'll let you do the honors. All right. When you tag a crane, you come up here above this knuckle right here, and you'll want to wrap it twice, and then lock it in. There you go. Once it's locked, it's locked, right? Once it's locked, it's locked. You'll feel it click when you get it in there. So, Brett, an interesting thing on this Sandhill crane hunting is that you put in for the lottery, and if you're drawn, you're actually sent a link where you go and have to take a test that shows me exactly how these birds look in flight, how they look juvenile, and the reason that is, is for what? There's a concern that hunters will mistake a sandhill crane for a whipping crane or a great blue heron. So the test has questions to make sure that you can identify the difference. There's a lot of shoot, don't shoot questions. You may have a scenario where you can't tell what color a bird is. It's flying in, but you can't tell what color it is. But if you can't tell what color it is, you need to be careful and not shoot that bird because it could be a whooping crane. Being in law enforcement, I feel like having a sandhill crane season actually helps protect the whooping crane because now you're putting hunters in the field who are educated in what whooping cranes look like, the fact that they need protection. And there's never been an accidental shooting of a whooping crane in the state of Kentucky by a hunter, correct? No. Well, we're gonna get this bird picked up. The only thing I gotta make sure I do before I process this bird or before midnight, I have to telecheck and put my telecheck confirmation number on here. That's it. But we, at this point in time, we're, we're gonna go check our other bird out. Yeah, let's go get it. All right. Wow, look how there's no feathers and look how much red is on the head of this bird. Correct, that would be considered an adult. You'll see on an adult bird that you have a lot more tan in the wing. Just a beautiful bird. You know, it is just a stunningly beautiful bird. A lot of people don't know, but these are excellent to eat. Oh, they're great. The nickname for them is they call them ribeye of the sky. <laughs> it doesn't get much better than ribeyes. You can grill it, fry it, bake it, you can do whatever you want, but I like to take that breast and go ahead and cut it in strips and then soak those strips for a couple of days in salt water mm -hmm. and get some of that blood out and it makes for much better table fare. Yeah, and look, we've been outside the blind now for a good 30 minutes or so, and the birds are still flying in. And this would be a spot if you were gonna hunt tomorrow, you come right back here to have another opportunity. You could, you could come back to the same spot in a day or two. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get these things on a hot grill, I will tell you that. They're great. February is the month here in Kentucky that I like to get out and start looking for antler sheds, and it's a great way to take inventory and see what buck survived. The bit I love being out here in Shaker Village. There's so many things to see and do. But today we got something a little different. Well, what do we got with us today? We got the bluegrass antler dogs coming out to look for sheds. And this is the perfect time of year to do this in March. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of people that are training their dogs to look for sheds. This has become very, 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 yes, very popular. Yes, it's gotten very popular in the past few years. And Shaker Village is obviously a great place to do that because you've got a lot of deer here, very limited hunting, so there's a lot of, lot of antler deer. But if someone wanted to bring a dog out here to do this, and they need to call you and get permission, correct? Correct, because we're still private land. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming out here to hike or whatever, that's, that's fine. Uh, if you're coming out here to look for sheds, you just need to give give me a call, and then uh, you get permission, and then we go about it that way. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, I got a feeling we're gonna find a lot of sheds. Have you guys been picking up many sheds here? Uh, we, found, we found some, yeah. So, but uh, again, we haven't found them all, so I'm yeah. sure there's some out there. <laughs> and they're, they're using a little better technology than you and I have. Right, they can, yeah. They can move and cover a lot more ground, have great noses. I've seen trail cam pictures. There's some really good deer out here. There are, we have a <laughs> lot. We have very healthy deer population here, so. Well, let's, uh, let's send them out there and see what we find. You ready to find one? Speak. Speak. Come on, high five. Yeah. You ready? You ready? You ready? Let's find a bone. Let's go. Let's go. Get some fresh deer tracks. Looking for bones. Find it. So we got two groups of dogs out here working. Our meeting point's right up here, right? Correct. Yeah, we're just going to go right to that cedar tree. Jace, why don't you get out in the field a little bit? 
cover some ground. Mom, you keep the... I'll stay fence. Yeah. Will they chase deer? I don't let them chase deer. Yeah, no. I no. don't want them doing that, so I try to stop them and get them back to me. They did good. They came right back as soon as... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you got the manipulator. I paid them. It sends like a little vibration to them. Come on, Susie. Come on, Fletch. Fine. What a nice day to be out here walking around, huh? Good boy. Good job. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nice job. <laughs> Let's see what you got there. Pestering me. What the? That was a good find. Another one's. Is there another one? <laughs> I've heard if you find one, the other one's usually within 20 yards. Good boy. Oh, good here. boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Blair. Good boy. Nice job. So they both. Ended up finding uh, the opposite sides. That is obviously the same deer. Yeah. So each dog, each dog had a find. Nice, Good nice job. job. Guys. A Good nice boy. little eight-point buck. Good job. Good job. Laying within 15 feet of one another, weren't they? So that worked out good. Find it. let it go. Jimmy just found this um, on, there's some well uh, beaten trails through here, so as you can see, he's still pretty honed in on it, so. Find the bone. Find it. Find it. Come on, Find Fletch. the bone, Suze. Find it. Find it, Fletch. Find it, Suze. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. Good job. It's a good one for this year's, but it's been laying there a little bit. Good job, Fledge. Come here, bud. Good job, Bubby. What do you think? Smell that, Suze. Good job. Good job. That's a good one there. Pretty good horn. Yeah. So which one of your dogs found that one? Well, Fletch got a hold of it first. Okay. You know, I've, I've been out here and done this a couple times, and it seems like a lot of times couples love to do this. You know, you get to you, you get to handle your dog, come out, and the dogs love it. Yep. It's a great way to get some exercise. And yeah, we love it. And you never know, you might find a trophy like this. It's a good one. How much deer sign have you seen today? <laughs> I, I've, I, we were just talking about it a minute ago. Over in here, I, I've never seen interstates like that. It's interstates. Yeah. It's deer interstates in, in these in these fields. So some lucky person later in the year will get an opportunity to hunt out here. And I think that they have some very limited hunting here at Shaker Village, but I know the Fish and Wildlife Foundation does have a drawing that someone will get a chance to come out and hunt. Boy, I'd love to hunt this piece of property. Well, we'll be, we'll be buying rifle tickets for sure, <laughs> no, no doubt. What I really love about shed hunting is it is a time of year where there's not a whole lot else going on. Right. <laughs> it's a great time to get out and get a little exercise. You get in that cabin fever. And uh, you know, you can take it as to highest level as you want. You can right. compete, you can just do it for fun. Right, and that's kind of, with our club, we really focus on, you can do a competition circuit if you want, or you can focus on the weekends. And it, we really enjoy that weekend warrior. Mm -hmm. We like to find those wild sheds. It's just very rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, it's a family activity. We can get our kids with us. Well, I appreciate you taking us out today. I had a lot of fun. Well, we really appreciate it. Yeah, it was a great time and a no, big thanks uh, to Shaker Village. This, yes. This is yes. a great spot to look it's, for antlers. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's been amazing today. I think the dogs had fun. We had fun, so. Yeah, yeah. well, thank you. It was a success. <laughs> Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have seven-year-old Lauren Doyle who is smallmouth fishing in the Licking River. Nice job. Here we have Ben Doyle who's 12 years old with a nice largemouth bass that was caught at Laurel River Lake. Check out this smile on Wyatt Moore as he shows us this nice 22-inch catfish that he caught in a farm pond. Here we have 16-year-old John Krutzinger with a nice buck taken in Henderson County, Kentucky. Nice job. 
Your 2021 Kentucky hunting and fishing license are now available for purchase. Your current license expires at the end of the month. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.